now let us come to a new concept it's the concept of this the limiting reagent don't panic by these new new or uh, very frightening terms which you are hearing they are just made to frighten you actually they are not much of a very i mean they are not very difficult so this limiting reagent before we get into this let us say we have two boxes in one we have suppose a and in another we have some b some substance and we don't know how much of a is there how much of b is there and we have a reaction a plus b gives c and we know this reaction is like this only one mole will react with one mole of b so we take a we take out b and then react it to form c then again some a will be left some b will be left we again take this out we again take this out again we do the reaction again you form c now at some point of time if the ratios are not exactly equal you will find that either a has finished or b has finished either a has finished and b is remaining or b has finished and a is remaining if they are not like 1 is to 1 mole ratio so the one which has finished earlier will i mean you can't have more of that because it's finished and extra a suppose b is finished so b can't be taken more and a is left over also although it can react with b i mean uh, it it is it it can react b is not available for it to react so that is why due to this consumption of b the reaction stops because b is consumed so this b will be called our limiting reagent because it limits the reaction and it stops the reaction because of getting consumed so if there is no more b to react then who will a react with so b limits the reaction and so it is called the limiting reagent so in most questions what you what they will give you is that this much of a is taken this much of b is taken how much of c will be formed so this a and b will not uh, be always in the uh, it will actually never be in the perfect ratio of molar so you will see that one of it is always left over and one of it gets consumed total so you have to identify which one gets consumed which would be the limiting reagent and then proceed with the calculation of other uh, weights or other volumes with that limiting reagent because if you go about with the calculate uh, go about calculating with the leftover thing then you will assume that the whole of that substance has reacted but it is not so let me give you an example suppose you have um a question like find weight of water formed by reaction of 100 g oxygen and 
100 gram hydrogen so first write the reaction and balance the reaction 2h2 plus o2 gives 2h2 any balancing would do so you are you are being given the information that 100 gram of oxygen and 100 gram of hydrogen is taken so here we have two moles of hydrogen reacts with one mole of oxygen so two moles over here would give you four grams and one mole of oxygen would give you 32 grams so four grams react with 32 grams but we have 100 grams so how many grams of oxygen would they react with so 4 into 25 that is 100 gram would react with 32 into 25 that is whatever x y z grams so you see that this 32 into 25 is quite a large number but only 100 gram of oxygen is taken isn't it so 100 gram of hydrogen is taken and it needs these many grams of oxygen but these many grams of oxygen is not available only 100 gram of oxygen is available so oxygen falls short and oxygen will thus be considered our limiting reagent so and once you find out the limiting reagent go about the question with the weight or the mo mo number of moles or anything of limiting reagent only don't take the other reactants into uh, don't take the weights of the other reactants because here if you take 100 gram of hydrogen you will get a wrong answer because 100 gram of hydrogen has not reacted only some part of 100 gram has reacted but oxygen the 100 gram has reacted fully so with oxygen you can perform the other um, this calculation so you have 100 grams oxygen so how many moles of oxygen do you have 100 by 32 moles of oxygen now one mole of oxygen would give two moles of water so 100 by 32 moles of oxygen would give 2 into this moles of water and these many moles of water if you want to convert them into weight multiply by the molecular weight of water which is 80 so it's nothing but 9 and 8 so it's 900 by 8 grams of water so if you would have taken 100 gram of hydrogen over here then you would have got a much uh, higher answer much great, uh, much more than 900 by 8 gram because but because hydrogen is not getting i mean 100 gram hydrogen is not fully getting consumed you cannot take it as the limiting reagent or you cannot use the 100 gram for performing the calculation you have to use hydrogen then you have to find how much hydrogen has reacted like 100 gram of oxygen would react with how many gram of hydrogen and then proceed but why do you why why would you find hydrogen and then go to water rather than that you can directly go from oxygen to water so this is the basic type of question asked from this limiting reagent